And there we go. Hello, everyone who's uh, listening. I literally just got done uh, making this message that I'm posting right now in Spanish. So <clears throat> I'm excited for that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, most of what I speak in is Spanglish. So it's a little, a little mixture of both here and there. So uh, I can't even say that uh, I will speak better in Spanish than I will in English because I just kind of speak both of them just all right. But nonetheless, I do want to share something with you guys today. Uh, I had a couple lessons that I had in mind that I said, okay, if nobody messages me, I want to go ahead and see um, kind of what we're going to share, what we're going to talk about. But I, even with even with those, I didn't know where to go, like how to start this Bible studies. Some things it's important that you know first before I can even guide you through the next things. It's like in steps. But they, I am going to share with you guys something that that like really, really stuck out to me over the last few days. And the first one is in the book of Hosea. That I will say I read my Bible mostly in um, Spanish. So that's Hosea's. It's after Daniel, before uh, Joel, or Joel, Hosea. That one right there. Okay, that's the book we're going to. Hosea, we're going to chapter 4. We're going to read verse, well, we're going to read from, from verse 1. And this is, uh, this is actually God's charge against Israel. Uh, they're having a contention. And the prophet here, uh, in verse 1 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. And we're going to jump down to verse 6. It says, this is the verse that really stuck out to me throughout these last couple of days. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Well, what, is verse, what does verse 1 say? There is no truth or mercy or, or knowledge of God. So in verse 6... You can see because you have rejected knowledge of God. I also will reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. And this is the verse that stuck out to me, specifically the stance or, or, or the part that says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected my knowledge. And here's the thing. This is specifically to a, 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 a part in history where they were literally destroyed. They were being destroyed. Nowadays, you can apply the same principle to what we're going through. We're being destroyed spiritually. Our houses are being uh, pretty much burned down to the ground. There's pornography that's taking place. There's people who are cheating on each other, which uh, it's really a fruit of, of the first one. Um, people are lying to each other. They're uh, mad at it, like literally murdering each other in their own uh, head. You know, when uh, Jesus says, uh, whoever is just mad, you know, whoever gets upset with their, with their neighbor, whoever is mad at their neighbor, and they're like really have that anger within them. They're already murderers. And there's, that's what you see. You see people throwing plates at each other, uh, just completely going off on each other, attacking each other. The house is no longer a place of love. It's more of just a co consistent and constant dissension. You're constantly fighting with each other. You're arguing. Uh, the, the you know, woman's crying. Now you're screaming at the kids. We're being destroyed from the inside. Why? Because we have rejected God's knowledge. And what is God's knowledge? Friends, brethren, family. This one right here. When was the last time you, you guys opened your scripture 
I know a lot of the a lot of people that are, that either are watching or a lot of people that I know they all have input on what scripture says. But funny enough, they never open the book. They never check to see, oh yeah, let me see if what I think is true. Let me at least uh double check it or proofread it. They make up verses or they completely distort the uh, distort the ones that are already there. We reject God's knowledge by not absorbing God's knowledge. We don't, we don't want to read it. We don't want to hear about that. Oh, it's so boring to read. <sighs> it takes forever to read. Let me just go ahead and binge watch eight hours of whatever. Or play video games. Which sometimes, to, to, to be uh, candid with you guys, we all, you know, we all go through these periods. But you have to understand. You have to pick up this book. This is your guide. This is your map. This is your... Uh, compass, whatever you want to call it. This is what leads you to Christ. This is what leads you to salvation. The word of God, this is what convicts you of your sin or what shows you, hey, you know what? God doesn't like this. God loves this. He loves for you to have mercy on the poor. He loves for you to visit the, the uh, uh, widows and the orphans. And he loves for you to do this, but he absolutely hates when you lie, when you cheat, when you steal, he hates when you uh, uh, adulter or have adultery, however you would translate that. How can you know to please God? How can you say, yeah, you know what? I'm on my way to heaven right now. Like I'm on a set path. Really? Yeah. Well, why? Well, and then they'll start just chattering on works. Well, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good girl. You know, uh, don't really cheat on my wife. You know, last time that happened was a long time ago. Or I've never cheated on her, but I do lust all the time. Or you know what? Yeah, I'm not a. I'm not that bad of a dad. I put a roof over their heads, and you know, I'm, I'm a decent guy. I'm overall a decent guy. And they compare themselves by themselves, and they think, you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm not a murderer. Right? I don't rape anybody. And their standards are this low for them. So they're this low too, but they think, oh, I'm right here, so it's not so bad. Here, the camera. They're this low, and they're right here. When the standard for Christ is up here, then you're really bad. You're really, really wrong. And you're destroying yourselves. You're. you're you're sinning against yourself, against your own body. So, why do I say this? Because you don't have the knowledge. You're not headed anywhere, anywhere, okay? And I do want to, you know, I think everyone in the world, well, in everyone in the U.S. is familiar with at least the word Psalms. Uh, David was uh, the author of many of them. And I'm going to go to the first one, the very first one. And we're gonna see what David thought. You know what? This is, this is the this is the essence. Let's start from the root. Let's. This is a good beginning point. And he said, "Blessed is the man." Uh, Psalms one one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And when we're talking about this, you can see that the priority is the scripture. There's a whole bunch of other verses that agree with what we're talking about right now. But I'm trying to keep these concise, short to the point. We're going to go ahead and go to the second verse that really, really stood out to me, which is going to be Matthew 10. And in Matthew 10, before I start reading, it is important for you guys to understand that uh, I have been in this Christian walk for almost a couple years. And I've kind of, you know, I've, I've sat back and I've learned and I've studied scripture heavily and not just reading it. But like actually going into the details, into the Greek words, the Hebrew words, like what it actually means. 
because I'm invested in my own personal, like in my salvation. I'm invested in pleasing the God who walked up to me. Like he came up to me and, and literally changed my life. I had an impactful encounter with a living God and he changed me. And yes, I, I mean, you know, people, people know me. People know me outside of just Facebook and they'll see, well, Kevin, you're not a perfect guy, right? You're not, um, you're not what I would call, you know, a saint according to this. Sure, you don't curse. Sure, sure you don't this. But I'm sure, like, I'm sure you're just, not, you're not a full saint. And, and I'm not. I'll never be, uh, not, not in this body, I will never be 100% perfect. But because of Christ's sacrifice is that I, my old nature is dead. Why do, why do I, what do I mean my old nature? When I sin, I don't feel like, oh, that's cool. I sin. Whatever. I'm not okay with it. I feel bad. Just like anyone who is born again, they feel bad. They feel that, that sense of, of guilt of say, God, I'm so imperfect. And you continue. You continue. Oh, I got mad again. Like I kind of raged a little bit there. And you you begin to grow. The, the person who has issues with alcohol or, or drugs, they're no longer okay with it. They're trying to get out of it. And it's a constant change to move forward. And when I say this, it's because people who met me more than two years ago, guys, I'm not the same person. And, and I haven't been so vocal as to my change in my life and for that I apologize because I've had this amazing light in front of me and I haven't been as adamantly to share it with everyone who's out here you know listening to me in my everyday life but quite frankly I'm I'm sick of sitting back and watching people not just lie to themselves sometimes they don't even know they're lying to themselves some people legit they know they're wrong and they'll just go with it other people think they're right and they're still going down the wrong path. And how do I know between right and wrong? Because of scripture right here. I need you guys to understand. Everything we're talking about now is not just... It's not my words. We, in the last video, I said we were going to have Christ. Christ's words. Old Testament, New Testament. This, the, the Spirit's words is what we're going to be. It's going to what's going to be between us. And what he has offered to me is new life. He has offered to thousands of more people. And what he has done in my family, what he has done in, in other people's families, like this is true. This is not a fairy tale. This is not something you can just completely, uh, what do you call it? 100% uh, proof. Like, look, here is God right here next to me. But because of how you live, because of how you Every all the evidence in scripture and all the evidence in your life and in the change in your nature, you understand. God, this is amazing. This is there's no way you don't exist. And this next verse that I want to read to you guys is Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse. Let's go ahead and do. <laughs> let's do verse. Where is it right here? 34. It says, Do not think that I come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, it is important that when we read this, we need to think, hmm, where else have we seen that Christ says a sword? Look, went right to it. If you guys would actually uh, go with me to Ephesians 6, verse 10, we're going to go over the armor of God. And it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This was uh, Ephesians 6, 10. Now we're in 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. In the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day 
and having done all, stand. Uh, stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, having and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, um, with which you will be able to quench the fire, all fiery darts of the wicked one, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now let's go ahead and go back to Matthew 10. We're going to do Matthew 10. And let's go to the verse uh, 34. And let's substitute that. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but the word of God. For I have come to set man against his father, daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies would be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me after, I follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. And why do I bring this up? This is the second verse that really st stood out to me the last couple of days. And it was it was because, again, this is this message is almost in terms of an apology because I've had in my hands this light, this water, this living water. And I haven't been as adamant as to share it with every single one of you guys who are on this webpage. Um, I've shared it with a few and they've reached out to me and they've said, hey, man, like, uh, I have questions. I have this. I have, you know, I have that. Like, where am I spiritually? And I, and because of that, I felt like, like I was doing okay in God's will. But now I feel like I need to do more. I need to do more to get this message across to whoever I can. Because going back to... to and I don't, I'm not sure if I shared it right now in the English version, but think of it as you're in a building, you're in your room, and you're asleep. I don't know if you guys know when, when there's fire, the chemicals or the, the something in the air just keeps you numb, keeps you asleep. And if you're here, and I'm awake, and I'm thinking, I need to get out of here, and I see you and your wife and your kids in the same bed, or you and your parents, or you and whoever your loved ones are, and I'm just kind of like, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, you know, don't want to push my beliefs on you or anything, but this, you know, it's on fire. So do you want to get out? And, you know, you're just like, no, like whatever. And I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, I get it. I understand. And I walk out. How am I going to feel when I'm outside, safe, good to go, and I hear you, your family, your wife, your kids, your whole Everyone you, you love screaming. Would you rather me that be that person? And you know, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Or would you rather me be the one who you're saying, you know, there's nothing wrong. And I just shake you and I tell you, hey, listen to me. There's fire. You and your loved ones are going to burn. And then you can finally wake up. And if, and if you're not waking up, would you rather me just be like, hey, I tried. Or would you want me to just maybe even slap you and tell you, hey, you need to get out of here. You're dead in your sins. You're going straight to hell. You've not accepted Christ as your Savior and your Lord. You've done this. You've done and You're just going. You're on a highway, literally going 100 straight to perdition. I know if I was and the shoes were reversed and I was in the bed. I would want someone to do whatever they had to do me. Punch me, pinch me, whatever. But wake me up. Please wake me up. And that is the, that is the stance I'm taking today. That we are going to be going over scripture. If you don't like what we're talking about and, you know, I'm going to pray for everyone who, who likes this and sees this. Um, 
If you guys would share it, that would be great. I'm really concerned about a lot of, all of your uh, lives and eternities. But I would just wish that at least one of you would listen. Because I used to hate people who preached to me. I used to detest it. And it wasn't until God came knocking and just, boy, did he wake me up. And I had no choice but to follow him. I had no choice. Once I had a real encounter with a real God, I couldn't walk away unchanged, unaffected. And I just pray that you guys are affected the same way that I was. Am I perfect? No. But I'm sure not what I was then. And he's done such an amazing work. Not just in my life. Not just to boast in my wife's life. And, and, and people who listen to his word. And if I sit here and I, I say, you know what? I love my friends. I'm not going to preach to them. I don't want to inconvenience them. You know what? I love my family. I'm going to respect everything they say, even if it might be wrong. You know what? I'm just going to sit back, relax. God will take care of it. If I do that, guys, I can't. It's driving me crazy. Every time I see a post, every time I see a post that's completely wrong, unbiblical, un it burns me. It it burns me to sadness because it's like that's wrong. You I, I see you're legit trying to get closer to God. But you don't know where you're going. You're lost. You have no compass. You have no guidelines. You, you're not reading scripture. You're not praying. You're completely detached from the vine. And, and according to John, I believe it was 15, you, apart from the vine, you can't do anything. Apart from Christ, you can't do anything. So I love Christ more than any of you guys. And he's given me a job to maybe be that annoying guy on your feed and to constantly be like, hey, 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 pay attention. Look at me. Look, look, look at this. Hear me out. You're going on, a, on the wrong path. It's the big path. It's the path everybody goes on. But the, the door, the gate is narrow. And not just that. The path is narrow that leads to salvation. You got a big, broad, wide road that leads to Leads to hell. So a lot of the people think they're on the narrow path. They haven't even found the narrow gate. They think they're safe because of their works. They're not putting their faith in Jesus Christ. In, in Jesus Christ alone and what he's done. Once they're inside the, the gate, they start deviating. They start moving around. They stop reading scriptures and they become, they fall prey to everything this world has to offer. They're numbed again. They're, they're like bit. With venom and they just fall asleep. Completely immobilized. Paralyzed. And may God have mercy on us all. To where even if I slip up guys. Because I'm no one special. I'm just. I can just slip up like that. And may somebody have my back also. And say hey buddy. There's no time to fall asleep right now. There's no time to rest. Get up. Have your eyes Firm on Christ. Your sight firm on Christ. Now let's move forward. Let's move forward through battles, through hardships. Let's get to let's get to to Mount Zion. And this is pretty much all I had to share with you guys. Uh everything that we're gonna go over, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. I promise you it is gonna hurt. Um it's in the way the best way I can describe it is you have a cut in your arm and it's completely spoiled. It even stinks. It reeks and you know your hands about to fall off. And you've put no alcohol, you've not decontaminated uh, decontaminated it at all. And the moment you spray a little bit of this alcohol, a little bit of this truth, a little bit of this serum here, it's going to burn. And it's going to hurt you because I'm directly going to be attacking your sin. I'm going to be attacking what 
what you're doing wrong. It's not comfortable when people tell you what you're doing wrong. But once it heals, you'll say, you know what? I'm glad because my life is not what it used to be anymore. There's love in my house again. I don't, I don't, I don't know how else to put it, guys. This is something amazing that cleans you from in from deep within. You clean what's on the inside first and then everything on the outside begins to, to be cleansed also. So in the name of Jesus, guys, um, I just I hope you guys hear this out and uh, hope you guys have a good afternoon. Um, may God bless you.